नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम 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 नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय So we're going to uh, explain something about the background to this festival, which is called Rathiyatra. Rathiyatra, the journey of the chariot. We can see there's the altar there with the three deities. On the right is Lord Jagannath with the with the blackish color and the big eyes, and in the middle. The yellow color is Subhadra, Lord Krishna's sister, and on the left, the white color is Lord Balarama, Lord Krishna's elder brother. So we generally refer to them as the Jagannath deities. And there's an interesting history about how they appeared in this world. It was arranged that three logs of wood were washed ashore. If you go to, ja have any of you been to Jagannath Puri? Yeah. Yes. Oh, many of you, not so many, some of you anyway. Yeah, you went to Jagannath Puri. So you know it's right on the coast and the waves there are very big. And sometimes people lose their lives there in the sea there. You have to be very careful. If you go and swim there, and if you go to bathe there at Jagannath Puri, because the current is very strong, the tide comes in and goes out, you can be washed away. So it happened three logs of wood were washed ashore from the ocean. And it was told, it was predicted that from these three logs of wood they could carve the form of the Lord of the universe, a form in which the Lord wanted to be worshipped in this Kali Yuga. We, we usually refer to Jagannath Daru Murti, meaning the, the Lord's form in wood. So it happened, there was one sculptor there and it said the sculptor, he was actually Vishwakarma. So Vishwakarma came and he volunteered that he would carve the forms of the Lord of the Universe from the three logs of wood. But he put a condition. He said, nobody should disturb me. He said, you must leave me to finish the work. He said, if you disturb me in the middle of the work, then I will leave and I won't complete the work. So it happened that the king, at that time, the king of Puri, Maharaj, not Prataparudra, Indra Jumna, right, Indra Jumna Maharaj, he was the king of Puri. So he was very anxious to see the Lord of the universe. So he agreed to the conditions and the, the, sculpt, the carpenter, the sculptor went into the room, closed the door and Maharaj Indra Jumna patiently waited outside and he could hear the chipping of the wood, he could hear the man chiseling away the wood and so he was confident that the work is being done. But after some time, after some days, it happened, there was no more, there was no longer any sound. And Maharaj Indra Jumna became very anxious. He thought, why is there no sound? Maybe he's already finished the work. So Indra Jumna Maharaj just decided he couldn't wait any longer. He was so impatient, he wanted to see the form of the Lord of the Universe. 
So he entered into the room. And as soon as he entered into the room, then Vishwakarma disappeared. But then Maharaj Indra Jumna looked at the forms of the Lord of the Universe and he saw, oh, he thought, oh my goodness, they're not complete. There's no arms and no legs. So he felt very guilty that, oh, I've done a terrible thing, that I'm responsible for disturbing the, the uh, carving of the form of the Lord of the Universe. And now the murtis are not complete. But then a voice from the sky spoke to Indra Jumna and they explained to Indra Jumna Maharaj. He said, no, this is a form in which I want to be worshipped. And the voice from above explained to Indra Jumna Maharaj that actually my arms and legs have shrunk into my body and, the, and my eyes have also dilated. You can see each of the deities, they have very big white eyes. Their eyes were dilated. Why? Why did their arms and legs shrink into their body? Why are their eyes dilated? Because they're so much in ecstasy, remembering the pastimes of the Lord in Vrindavan with his devotees. Lord Jagannath loves his devotees very much and his topmost, the best of all his devotees are in the holy place, the holy place of Vrindavan. So in this way Indra Jumna Maharaj was told not to feel bad but to accept that this was the form in which the Lord wanted to be worshipped in the Kali Yuga. So the worship was begun. <coughs> Sometime back, about a month ago, we celebrated what is called Snanyatra. Snanyatra is a festival where we bathe the deities. Everyone comes and we bring yogurt and milk and ghee and honey, different substances, and we pour it onto the deity, just like you do at Abhishek. So we do the, we give the, the Jagannath deities, we give them a bath in all these different sacred substances. And then, after they're bathed, then the deities are taken, and they're no longer visible in the temple and they're put into a private room. And it said that the deities have caught, become sick. They've got a cold or a fever. <coughs> they're not well. And they're resting. And for a period of, what, 14 days? They're, they remain in the room. And there's no darshan of Lord Jagannath for that period. If you go to the temple of Lord Jagannath, you see the altar is empty. Just for a period of two weeks, the Lord is not there. And then, after two weeks, then the Lord recovers and there's a celebration. And the celebration is the Rati Atra. Actually, Lord Jagannath proposes he said, I want to go home to visit my family because Lord, Lord Krishna, he grew up in Vrindavan. But as he got a little older, it was arranged that he went to Mathura. Maybe you know the story that Akrura came on a chariot as a messenger for King Kams. King comes, the cruel king, he wanted to have Krishna killed. So he sent a crew to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. So at that time Krishna left Vrindavan. He came to Mathura. And then there was, of course, there was a wrestling match. And at one point Kamsa tried to kill Krishna. So Krishna killed Kamsa. And then 
Krishna was living for some time in Mathura, but then Mathura was being attacked, so Krishna <coughs> moved everyone from Mathura to Dwarka. And Krishna then went to live in Dwarka. So he had pastimes in Vrindavan, in Mathura and in Dwarka. It is said, Krishna is perfect in Dwarka. He is more perfect in Mathura and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is his very special place with his very special devotees, the cowherd boys and the cowherd <coughs> girls, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda. So Lord Krishna is very attached to the holy land of Vrindavan. So Lord Krishna uh, always thinks about Vrindavan and he wanted to go along with his brother Balaram and his sister Subhadra. They wanted to go and visit Vrindavan. So the Rathiatra, the rat, the rat, this chariot which we have here, this is meant for pulling. And we're going to pull it. You know, if you go to Jagannath Puri, they have a very big wide street very white and the chariots are, are colossal, they're gigantic and there's no brakes on the chariot also and the people pull the chariot and people come, hundreds and th millions of people come for the Rathiatra and they all help to pull the chariot and it's amazing. It's amazing. Sometimes people are crushed and sometimes people die. Every year some people lose their life at the Rathiatra festival. It's so crowded and it's so chaotic and there's this huge, there are three chariots. We only have one chariot. But in Jagannath Puri they have three very big chariots. One for Balaram, one for Subhadra, and one for Lord Jagannath and everyone pulls the chariot and everyone, people who pull the chariot of course they get special mercy, they're blessed, they get a lot of purification. So everybody wants to pull the chariot. So the Rathiatra festival Actually, the first Rathiatra didn't take place at Jagannath Puri. The first Rathiatra took place at Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra, of course, you've all heard of Kurukshetra. It's famous for the battle of Kurukshetra. And it's famous because Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita there at Kurukshetra. But Kurukshetra is also the place of the very first Rathiatra. And I'll tell you the story what happened. Lord Krishna was living in Dwarka and he had married. He had, of course, many wives, right? Lord Krishna has 16,108 wives. So it happened there was going to be a solar eclipse. So a solar eclipse is means it's a very inauspicious event and to counteract the inauspicious event Lord Krishna was bringing all of his family to Kurukshetra to perform sacrifice, to do yajna and to give charity because by doing these things uh, yajna, dan and tapa then you can counteract the inauspiciousness, the inauspiciousness of the eclipse. 
So Lord Krishna came there with all of his family and he brought with him all the sages. Different great sages all came because they're going to perform the rituals, the different rituals which he wanted to perform. Lord Krishna, at the same time, Lord Krishna also invited the gopis to come. Lord Krishna had been living in Dwarka and he was missing the gopis. The gopis were also feeling separation from Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna sent a letter to Vrindavan, to the people in Vrindavan to tell, to tell them that I'm coming, I'm going to come to Kurukshetra. Now Kurukshetra is it's in Haryana, it's not so far away from Vrindavan. Dwarka is far away. Dwarka is away over on the coast of the very tip of Saurashtra in Gujarat. So Lord Krishna came all the way from Dwarka to Kurukshetra and he, told, he had sent a message to Vrindavan to request all the gopis that please come and meet me. I have not seen you for a long time. It will be very nice to see you again. So the gopis naturally, when they got the message, they were very anxious to go to Kurukshetra to meet with Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna Lord Krishna came there with all these sages and his wives and everyone and the gopis came. But when the gopis came there and met with Krishna, they were not very satisfied because they thought Krishna is not the same anymore. He'd gone to Dwarka and he got married and he was not a cowherd boy anymore. When he was, when he was living in Vrindavan, he was a cowherd boy. So the cowherd boys, you know, they all play the flute because they call the cows by playing the flute. And Lord Krishna, he's famous as Murli Dar, he's always holding the flute, he plays the flute very nicely. But the gopi saw Krishna, he's not got a flute anymore and he's not got any peacock feather in his hair. When he was in Vrindavan, Lord Krishna would always put a peacock feather on his hair because in Vrindavan there's many peacocks and so many peacock feathers, the plumes of the peacock are here and there. And Lord Krishna liked to decorate himself with the peacock feather. But now he's come from Dwarka, it's not the same. The gopis are not satisfied. Also, the place Kurukshetra is not like Vrindavan. 5,000 years ago, Kurukshetra was a busy place. There were many chariots rumbling back and forward and there were elephants moving about as well. So Lord Krishna was a different person. He had come from Dwarka. So when the gopis saw Krishna like this, they thought, this is not the Krishna we know. We are going to take him back to Vrindavan. We don't like this Krishna of Dwarka. He's a prince and he's got all the opulence, all the jewelry and the fancy clothes and so on. We are going to take him to Vrindavan. We want him as we know him. 
as a cowherd boy. So this is Rati Atra. The mood of Rati Atra is performed in that mood that we are bringing Krishna in the form of Jagannath, we are bringing him back to Vrindavan, to his home. And every year the devotees perform this ceremony pulling the chariot. In Jagannath Puri, the chariot moves from the main temple, the main temple of Jagannath Puri. It moves down to the Gundicha temple, down the road. A distance, it's only a distance of a couple of kilometers, but that's a long way to pull these big chariots. The chariots are huge. And sometimes it, it takes more than one day to move the chariot to that place. So anyway, they pull the deities down to the Gundicha. Gundicha temple represents Vrindavan. And they bring the deities down to Vrindavan and they take the deities off the chariot and they put them in the Gundicha temple. And Lord Jagannath stays there for seven days and then after seven days then they have a return Rati Atra and they bring Lord Jagannath back to his temple again. So we perform this Rati Atra festival in a simple manner. We also want to create the mood of Vrindavan and we create the mood of Vrindavan especially by chanting the holy name, by chanting the names of Lord Krishna, the Hare Krishna mantra. Five hundred years ago Lord Chaitanya would take part in the Rathiatra festival. Many great saints Shankaracharya also used to go to Jagannath Puri. He also would take part in Rathi Atra. And he even wrote the Jagannath Astikam, which we recite often at the festival. So it, this Rathi Atra festival has been performed for thousands of years. And in Iskon, we perform the festival in a simple manner, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and pulling the chariot and distributing prasadam. You can see so much prasadam, different foodstuffs have been prepared and they are all offered to Lord Jagannath and they will be distributed to everyone. So the festival of Rati Atra is a festival of creating auspiciousness. Everyone who takes part in the festival gets mercy. We get the mercy of the blessings of Lord Jagannath. It is said everyone who sees Lord Jagannath on the chariot is liberated. Just by seeing the deities on the chariot, you are liberated. So, it's a great advantage. We want you all to stay liberated, right? Now, you're, you, tonight you're going to be liberated. You, we want you to stay liberated. To remain in Krishna consciousness <coughs> and faithfully chant the holy name and take part and devotional activities. Lord Jagannath means the Lord of the universe and he's here with his sister Subhadra and his brother Balarama. Lord Balarama is the Adi Guru. He's the original spiritual teacher. Lord Krishna <coughs> Jagannath is Swayam Bhagavan. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are one family and they, they are going back to Vrindavan <coughs> and we are pulling them on the chariot. Take them back to Vrindavan. 
So we want to create that Vrindavan mood. The Vrindavan mood is created by nice chanting of the holy name. When we're chanting the holy name, Lord Krishna is present in the chanting. Lord Krishna comes in the Kali Yuga in the form of his holy name. So we are performing the Shratyatra. Lord Jagannath is here in the deity form. The deity is also, we said, Daru Murti, the Lord's form in wood. Lord, the deities can be made out of different substances, but Lord Jagannath is always wood. In, uh, the, in, in, in temples we have Radha and Krishna, they may be of brass, they may be of uh, stone, they can be made out of paint, they can be made out of jewels, and they can be even worshipped in the mind. But Lord Jagannath, he is Daruma, <coughs> he is in the wooden form. The Lord Jagannath reciprocates with every devotee according to their mood. So we want to cultivate that mood of pure devotion, to worship the Lord with pure devotion. Rupa Goswami describes pure devotion, Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam anukuyena krishna no shilanam bhaktir utama. Pure devotion means no material desires, no desire even for liberation. We simply want to serve Krishna favorably. So this is Rathiyatra. It's an opportunity for all of us to engage in Krishna's service by chanting his holy name, by pulling the chariot, and by taking the prasadam also from Lord Jagannath. All of these different activities. They help us to get Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness is in us and it's awakened by taking part in festivals like Ratiatra. So we are performing this Ratiatra in many countries all over the world. Every year Lord Chaitanya would come and he would dance in the kirtan. And what would happen, you see, the, the devotees would come from different places. They would all come for to Jagannath Puri, but they would come from, some would come from Shantipur, and some would come from Navadvi, and some would come from Katwa, and there are different places, they would all come in Bengal, they would come all the way from Bengal, all the way to Jagannath Puri to take part in the Rathiyatra. And each of the groups, they had their own kirtan party, all right? Just like here in Damodardesh, the there are different <coughs> groups of kirtans, different devotees in different parts of the city, they've got their own kirtan parties. And when they have Rathiyatra, come together, we have different kirtaniers, different groups. So Lord Chaitanya, he organized the Rathiyatra, the different kirtan parties would surround the chariot and Lord Chaitanya would dance and he would dance in each of the kirtan parties at the same time. Simultaneously, he would appear in each and every one of the kirtan parties. The different devotees were all thinking, Oh, Lord Chaitanya is dancing in my kirtan party. Just like when Krishna was dancing Ratha Leela, the, each gopi was thinking, Oh, Krishna is dancing with me. Each of the gopis was dancing and they were each thinking, Krishna is with me, he's dancing with me. In the same way, Lord Chaitanya 
He was appearing in each of the different kirtan parties, chanting and dancing. So, our Hare Krishna movement, we also learned from Srila Prabhupada how to put on Rathayatra. And Prabhupada would come and take part in the Rathayatra. And, and he would also dance also, although he was not so young. But he liked to also take part in the kirtan party. He liked to chant. You know, when Prabhupada was a small boy, he also took part in Rathiyatra. As a small child, he would do Rathiyatra. And there's a nice story how Lord Jagannath appeared to the devotees in the Hare <coughs> Krishna movement. Prabhupada never mentioned about Jagannath to us. But it happened that one day when Prabhupada was living in San Francisco, one of the very first temples in America was in San Francisco. So it happened, one of the devotees, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, a young American woman, she had gone shopping and she went to this Indian import store. She went to buy some incense. But when she was in the store, she found some dolls and she, had, she was puzzled when she saw the dolls. So she'd never seen these dolls before, so she purchased one of them and she took it back and she showed it to Srila Prabhupada and she said, Srila Prabhupada, I was in the Indian import store and I found this doll. I don't know what it is. And she took it out of her bag and when Srila Prabhupada saw it, he offered obeisances. He went on the floor and offered his obeisances. And she was surprised. She said, what's wrong? And Srila Prabhupada said, this is the form of Lord Jagana. He said, you have, you have purchased this doll, but you don't know this is the form of the Lord of the universe, Lord Jagana. And then he told her, go back to the store and see if they have any other forms like this. And she went back and she got Subhadra and Lord Balaram. And she brought them back and she showed them to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, oh, he said, this is very auspicious. He said, Lord Jagannath has appeared to us. He said, this is a sign from Krishna that he wants us to worship him in this form. So Prabhupada then asked any of the devotees if they knew how to do sculpture. He said, we can carve some bigger form, because they were just tiny dolls, they were just very small dolls. So Prabhupada said, if somebody is a sculpture, they can carve some of these forms and make them big and then we can install them and worship them in the temple. And so it happened like that. One of the devotees knew how to do sculpture and he began carving. They got some big blocks of wood and they began carving the deities and then they painted them, put them in the temple in San Francisco. And so even today the temple there is called New Jagannath Puri because Lord Jagannath had appeared there in San Francisco. And then Prabhupada also asked the devotees to put on Rathiyatra and they had the festival in San Francisco. There's a big park there, Golden Gate Park, just at the side of the ocean. Just like Jagannath Puri is at the side of the ocean. So San Francisco is also on the coast at the side of the ocean. So they had Rathiyatra there and every year they have Rathiyatra there. Very nice. So that's a little history of the Rathiyatra. I'm trying to tell you the different pastimes. I don't know, are there some questions? Anybody like any questions that anybody can ask? Anything? Don't be shy. Yes? So one thing is that like you were saying that um, he was 
Prabhupada attended the Ratya Prasad dialogue, but then I also heard that Prabhupada was the one who established the Ratya Prasad. So, how do we understand this? That I want to. What do you mean? Prabhupada established uh, Like, means he, he started this uh, Ratya Yatra um, thing, you know, he, he took Jagannath out. Means he, he took he, the deities out. That's he what instructed the devotees. He gave the instruction to the devotees mm -hmm. to do these things. That was my doubt. Huh? Prabhupada instructed the devotees how to do it. They didn't know, we didn't know anything. <coughs> Prabhupada had to give, tell everything how to do it. And gradually we learned and gra some people would go to Jagannath Puri mm -hmm. and we would see Jagannath Puri, how they do it there. And then we'll try also to incorporate what they do there in Jagannath Puri. We will try to incorporate some of the things in our own Rathiyatra. Yes, brother. Hello, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, you said the uh, first Rath Yatra was carried in uh, Purukshetra and uh, Gopi Sarsa came over there. This is before uh, Purukshetra war? Or yes, before Kurukshetra war. Before the Kurukshetra <coughs> war, the Rath Yatra took place. Lord Krishna met with the gopi. It's the only place, Kurukshetra is the only place outside Vrindavan where Lord Krishna met with the gopis and Srimati Radharani. It's a very special place, Kurukshetra, because of that pastime. Of course, Krishna had come with all of his wives, so the gopis were a little bit you know, they, they were not used to Krishna having all of his wives with him. And the gopis had to be very careful. They could not speak to Lord Krishna so freely because Lord Krishna was with all of his wives. So it's a, the mood of Kurukshetra is very special. The mood of the gopis because they are feeling that Oh, there's Krishna, but oh, he's with his wives, and you know, it's very tense. Then the, the feelings which the gopis have for Lord Krishna, how intense their love for Krishna is. Thank you, Shama. I accept my humble obeisances. I uh, just wanted to check one thing about uh, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, that uh, the gopis always used to have this feeling of separation, intense feeling of separation. So how does one get to develop such a feeling? If you took, uh, yes, how could we do? The mood of the gopis is what we would call vipralamba seva. Service in separation. <coughs> so how could we, we're supposed to follow in the footsteps of the gopis, right? Lord Chaitanya taught us to follow in the footsteps of the gopis. Gopi Bhartu Padakamala Das Das. We follow in the footsteps of the gopis. So how can we cultivate that mood? of service in separation. One way we can cultivate that mood is by performing Sankirtan. <coughs> we perform Sankirtan in that mood of separation from Krishna. And especially when we distribute books <coughs> When we take some books and try to distribute them to people, we're trying to give them Krishna consciousness. So the mood of the gopis is, each gopi is not thinking, I want to enjoy with Krishna, but they're thinking, I want to help other gopis to enjoy with Krishna. The gopis are not selfish. So if we want to cultivate the mood like the gopis, we also have to give up selfishness 
and become selfless. The gopis all think, I want to bring Radha to be with Krishna. But Srimati Radharani, she, want, she thinks, I want to make arrangements for the other gopis to be with Krishna. Each of them are thinking that they want to <coughs> make arrangements for another person to enjoy, to be with Krishna. So that is the mood of the gopis. Service in separation. We do service for Krishna and we are thinking of Krishna in, the, in his separation. So it's, it's a very elevated <coughs> mood, of course. How can we cultivate that mood? By hearing and chanting. We have to get the, the foundation right. And the foundation for that mood of service and separation like the gopis, you can get that mood the more you do hearing and chant. First comes hearing and we have to hear for a long time. I don't know about you but when I first used to hear Krishna consciousness, I, you know, I wasn't very clear, I couldn't understand things very well. But gradually hearing and hearing more and more, then gradually become familiar. It starts to make sense and you can fit everything together. And Srila Prabhupada also said, when he first met his Guru Maharaj, he could not understand, he could not un but he did not go away. So that's very important. So we encourage you also, even though you may not understand so well, please, please don't go away. Please stay and hear and gradually you become more familiar. <coughs> so we want to get the mood of the gopis? Yes. Hearing. Yes. First hearing and then chanting. And then comes remembrance. <coughs> it will awaken one after another. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Maharaj, I have. Yes. Maharaj, we are having Ladu Gopal in our house. So I came to know that we should not leave the Ladu Gopal alone. Like sometimes we are coming here or anywhere for satsang or any other work, we are going out. So is it wrong if we are leaving the deities at home? Is it wrong to leave the deity alone at yeah, home? Yeah, at home, like especially like the Gopal. Well, I've never heard this before. Uh, one devotee only, I came to know from one devotee only in ICF forum. I was hearing one lecture. So, was like that, so. Because deity seva, we have to be very careful. And like he said, like we have small child in our home. So we will not leave him alone anymore. <coughs> So, same way, Ladu Gopal is also in the child form, no? Yes. So, like that he was saying. Mm. Well, yes. I mean, wherever you have a deity, you, we, we do, we should really be there with the deity. I mean, we don't want to leave the deity unprotected. You put the deity to rest at night. Yeah. Of so, course. You, like if we are going early, so we can make the deities to rest early Yes. Yeah, if you're going yeah, out... Yeah, at this point also he told that otherwise you can uh, make the deities at rest and yes. then you don't leave them alone. Right, you put the deity to rest. That's what we usually do. You put the deity to rest and you can lock up the temple. You can leave the deity. If you put the deity to, to, to rest, then it's all right. So, but then is it okay, like, uh, suppose we are going out in time, like 3 or 4 o'clock, and we going are where? late, suppose we are going early, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we have to go out somewhere. So, is it okay, like, we will make the deities at rest, and if we are coming late, and then we will wake them next day, is it okay? Yes. Well, everything at time, place, and circumstance, you know. If you have something important to do, then you have to do it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you can do that. 
you just ask Krishna you, that I have to go out, I have some in, important work to do, you please take rest. Oh. <coughs> and usually like if you are going out of town, we mostly uh, we keep our deities to our, some God sisters home like that. That is also fine. Yeah. And some also say that we can sleep or make them sleep in our home also. But that's I think that's better if we can make them stay at somebody else so that they can be taken care of. Yes. Better they remain on the outer throne, then they can be offerings can be made, puja can be done. That's better. Otherwise you can take them with you. Some people take the deity with them everywhere. Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Sure. Mm -hmm. He's chanting. 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 He's chan